All right, so um, today we've got a bit of a tutorial on, well, using MIDI controllers with, with MA and a way around the normal way you do it. So for those of you that have tried to use a MIDI controller with, in MA, you know that it won't recognize faders because it can't natively uh, take the CC data or control change data and use it. So th in the past, what you would do is you'd buy Bohms, which is, well, $70, and not everyone just, you know, especially if you're starting out, and you just, yeah, you have a MIDI controller for some other software that was free or that you, was cheaper than, M well, anything's cheaper than MA, I guess, um, if you had, were using it for something else, then you'll know that it, it won't, and you might want to use it for either some extra capability within um, within MA and MA3D for programming, or if you, ha or even if you're just using it for at your home for in your previous studio for programming, or if you have somehow access to a node and you need one to fader instead of you know just the ten X keys that you have access to with the F function keys and that stuff. So the way we're going to do it is with DMX remote and with a free piece of software called QLC Plus, which stands for QLight Controller. Basically, QLC Plus gives you four free universes to output. So that means that you can obviously um, output those four free universes through USB DMX, Artnet, whatever your heart desires, basically. So what we're going to try and do is we will set up DMX remotes coming from MA, from QLC into MA because QLC can natively recognize the fader data. So I'm going to show you how to set up in QLC, how to set up the Artnet. Obviously, it's going to be using Artnet, so you'll need a network of some sort. Your loopback should work fine. Um, so yeah, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to jump straight into QLC. And once you open it, it'll be a new workspace. Just save it, just press save as, and then I'm just going to say save as what MIDI, for example, and then save. And that is now saved. So what you're gonna do is we're gonna set up one we're gonna set up one fader. So all three buttons and the fader. So we're gonna say add fixture and it'll automatically go to generic dimmers, just say quantity four. That's all you gotta do in this section, and now you've patched. So now we're going to go over to functions in the corner here and press this thing which is called new scene. Then I'm going to or let me I'm gonna actually jump back into fixtures quickly. And what you need to do is I'd recommend it. Actually, you don't need to. Just label it. So I'm going to label it fader one um, properties exec one but one exec one but two and then finally exec one but three, but <laughs> um, then we're gonna go hop, hop in back into functions and I'll see in and again, label these. So fader one, then all we're going to do is we're gonna press this plus button to add the fixture, fader one, click on that part, tick that on, put that to full. New scene, exec one, but one, press the plus, find the exec button, put that on, pull that up, Exec, exec one but two, same thing. We're gonna find this. Click there on the name. Press that little checkbox above it to activate it. Pull it up, and finally, exec one but three. And then, as before, grab it, tick it, tick it, put it up. Once that is done, we're going to just click here so that it goes away, and we're gonna look for the sync down here called Virtual Console. Click on that, and then in the button, you can see a button up here, click once, click twice, and click a third time for all three buttons. Now, you can see there's the fader thing here. Click that once and bring it in, and then we've created our buttons. So now I'm gonna make them a bit bigger. Um, what I'll do is I'll put this QLC file in the description as well, so if you want to um, take this just to figure it out, you're more than welcome to but uh, it's really a very simple software. So now what we're going to do is we're going to right click on the button, press widget properties, go here, find where it is, so it's button one, and then it'll automatically take the name. Now you need to set this to flash, or else it will, so it's this flash function here, or else it will obviously just run forever, and then it'll just, if you're, that button is say go, it's gonna go forever. So then the middle one is button two, again, flash, and three. So what we're going to do is we're gonna set them up, and then I'll show you how to get the MIDI into it. 
Now for the fader, you're going to click right click, press widget properties, and then change it to go to playback, find wh what it is, so it's fader one, and then you're done. So now if we uh, bring that up, it'll obviously bring, you can see here that it'll slowly bring that one to full. So now we want obviously a fader, a uh, fader or oh, MIDI controller. <laughs> we're going to go to inputs and outputs, and we're going to go to input one. So you'll see that mine's already showing that there's a MIDI device, but if it doesn't, find MIDI where it says Microsoft GS Waveable Synth, press refresh, and I'll throw you back into Universe 1, but it'll find your um, MIDI controller. So now what we're going to do is in Universe 2, make sure you're in Universe 2, set to the input and the feedback, so that it obviously gives feedback. And then in Universe 1, whilst we're here, we can go and set the output to Artnet on whatever universe your MA is in. So if I go to MA, System, MA Network Control, I'm 192.168.0.60. So I'm going to set it to output on that. Now that you've done that, we're going to hop back into Virtual Console. Again, we're going to right-click on this. And we're going to say, go to where it says External Input here. And all you have to say is Auto Detect. Then, when I push it up, you can see that it does actually detect the universe and the channel. Don't worry about the question marks, those it's works. I'm using a Korg Nano Control 2 here, but as it, um, the uh, QLC Plus has predefined like profiles for the, all of these um, MIDI devices. So there's the Intec Playback, Elation, MIDI Con, Korg, APC, uh, Behringer even, all those things. So you can see, so it automatically will detect it or put the whatever needs to happen. And then we're going to do this for all of them. So we're going to go to widget properties again. You can see auto detect down here. I press the button and it's found. And with this one as well, auto detect. And with this one as well, auto detect. So now all three buttons are met. Now the main thing you need to remember before you got it out of, um, out of core, uh, out of QLC, I mean, is I'm just going to make this smaller because it isn't showing up. Uh, is that this green play button in the corner has to be pressed. And now, as you can see, it's all, it's all responding to the data, which is obviously what we want. So now we're going to go and hop back into MA. And the first thing we need to do is we're going to patch our dimmers in the patch of fixture schedule under your dummy layer. So we're going to need three or four for what I've done and patch them to a universe you won't be using. So I'm going to make them 60.001. Channel ID, you can make whatever because you're not going to use that, obviously. Or, yeah, you're not going to use it. So the one thing to remember is it will count against your parameters, but obviously if it's in a universe you're not trying to output, it won't affect it unless I'm 99% certain that's right. If I'm wrong, I don't think I'm wrong. So now we've got all our dims patched here. We can say yes just to the patch. Now we're going to go to Remote Input Setup, DMX Remotes. If you haven't watched the DMX Remotes tutorial on the other channel, there will be an annotation now to go and check that out if you want some more information. But we're going to say add multiple and add four. Then just slide this and slide like that. Go to the top one, 60.001. So it's got all of them. Type it. They're all going to be exec or page one. 60.001 is the fader. Then it's button one, button two, and button three, if I am correct. Let's check. Button one, button two, button three. So once that is done, all we have to do is, um, that's obviously if you're using, so obviously you'll set this up if it's multiple faders, if it's multiple buttons, whatever it is, you'll set that up. Then we come out of this, we're gonna go back into setup, network protocols, we're gonna take, and now we're in uh, the Artnet area, obviously, Artnet. If I delete and re-add it, you'll see that it automatically starts as output auto. Right click or edit, and then go to input. Then for the local start, set that to whichever universe you uh, put your dummy fixtures in. So in my case, it is 60. Then make sure that Artnet input active is highlighted and that network DMX, if alone, is active. Now, if all went right, we can see that we are getting data. And um, so obviously, you can see that as I bring, if I, if I just readjust this, or if I bring this over here, and go like that, you can see that as I bring the fader up in QLC over here, it is going up in MA, then the flash button, which is button one works, go and off. So it's very simple. All you really need to remember is to, in QLC, just set all of these to flash so that they obviously just do what they're meant to do and they don't um, they don't stay on because you'll see, I can actually show if I'm, I should be right in saying this, but if I, Go here and I go to widget properties and I just set a toggle, then it will probably. Oh, it doesn't. Oh, well, yeah, so if you set a toggle, my mistake, 
it will basically, you'll have to switch it on, deactivate it, and bring it back to go to the next queue. So, set it to flash, then it'll work. Um, if you know KLC, then it's going to be pretty easy for you to adapt. But yeah, so you can use this for, I mean, as many as many faders, and you, if you have 30 faders, you can set all 30 faders up. It'll take you a bit of time, but I think most people will be happier to take the bit of time than to spend hours upon hours just, not hours upon hours, sorry, <laughs> hours upon hours of work, yeah. Um, it's, obviously, it's a, it's a nice alternative to buying bones because bones as I said, is $40. So if you don't want to, this is how it'll be. So QLC plus the link to download it is in the description. It's, as I said, free, all good. Um, obviously, you just need the network. I'll link um, the QLC plus show file that I've got if you just want to... Uh, download that for any for any reason, just to play around with it. Maybe something isn't working on your side and you just want to check it. Uh, but yeah, if you've got any questions, obviously leave them down in the description below. If you want to learn more about remote inputs, go check out the video on the Grand MA Tutorials channel that I'm part of for more information on that. And yeah, other than that, I'm just going to say thank you for watching, as always. Uh, if you have any, as I said, questions, my email is always down in the description. You're always welcome to put some questions in the comments and I'll get to them as soon as I can. And yeah, I guess thanks for watching. And if you want to see more tutorials just like this, make sure to subscribe. And uh, cheers.